trying some new things. I have um, two screens up now because ideally, I, last year I did it. What that really means, and I don't know if you knew this or not, was that I couldn't fully see all of you when I was teaching. And, and it, that was annoying. Um, even though many of you turn off your screens anyway, um, for all sorts of reasons, which I fully understand, um, because when I go to a class also, you know, it's nice to be in PJs, et cetera, et cetera. But for today, so I'm not gonna like go crazy about that. I know you're gonna wanna turn up your screen. Um, and some of you I know, but I would love it if right now, if you're decent and willing, if you could just turn on your screen for a few, for a moment so I could see you. So when somebody talks, I know who you are. Um, okay, so I see here, Jerry Schwartz. And some of some of you are my dear friends. Some of you are, uh, many of you are dear friends and also relatives. Um, so I see Jerry Schwartz and I see Jamie Willens. I see Cheryl Korn, my parents, okay. Um, Herschel and Naomi, Tippy, Debbie, and Melissa's mom, Marilyn Danto, her baby Nachat. And there is Sue, okay. Um, Adina, I see your is off. Sorry, I can't, did not sit up with camera. Okay, I, that's totally fine. Esty, Lance, and Adina, um, I don't see you. It's, it's totally your choice, um, but I'd love to see you guys. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Even if you turn your screen off, it might help me to know who's talking. Um, and here we are, it's been, I think about three months since, um, certainly since I've taught this class and hi, wait, let's see, they, they join in here. Cookie, hi Cookie. And Shelly Schaffel might be there as well. Um, just take my jacket off. Um, a lot of things I'm sure has happened throughout this past summer for many, many people. Um, as you can see, I am now teaching from a different spot. Okay, Lance, no problem. Um, I understand, but nice to have you here. Um, a lot of things have happened over the summer for, for all of us. It's been three months and three months in life, a lot can happen. But one of the things that happened here was Shibutsi, renovations. And therefore that beautiful office that I used to teach in um, is gone, basically. We've changed it into a guest room for our family, for our kids and parents, et cetera. But also outside, because I wanna try um, two screens, I am not teaching outside right now, which was also very beautiful um, and green. So what you get to see for a lot of this um, shear is actually our elliptical, which um, Halavai, I used it more um, than I do, really, really. So, uh, um, but there it is. I apologize for the uh, lack of aesthetics. I hope that our shear can, uh, can make up for that. Okay, let's get started. Um, this year, the shear is a little bit shorter. It's, it only goes till 10. So, uh, you know, I want to say uh, just a few things about, about just in general, please. Um, this is a shear that I want you to participate in. Um, if you have a thought, if something associates for you in your own life, if you have a question, please unmute and ask it. I will say I'm not, please do not be, vi I'll say it this way. Please be very, very specific and very pointed. Um, in terms of your question or your comment, you know, share, please share, but you know, you know, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about and any question, if I can answer, I certainly will. And if I can't, I will tell you. Um, so I want this to be a dynamic class. Now, um, also in terms of what we're going to be learning in here, um, you know, there are obviously a gazillion things to learn from the Torah. Um, but one of the most important ways to study it, especially in our times, is to learn the Parsha with the goal of answering the following question. And that is, what do the Psukim teach me about how I can serve Hashem, how I can come closer to Hashem, how can I grow spiritually and develop my Neshama? Right now, today, this week, right? What can I take from the Parsha right now that will enhance my Avodat Hashem? That's, that's how I learn and that's what I like to try and teach. And so the way we do that in this class is we generally focus on one word or two words or a pasuk or a section or an idea in the text. And we dive in deep um, with the help of commentators, classical commentators, Hasidic commentators and, and modern commentators. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And we are, our Parsha this week is Lech Lecha. We are going to be zeroing in on Lechlecha. But before that, I would like us to take a brief look at how we got to Lechlecha in the Torah. 
right? What preceded Abraham being commanded, lech lecha, go, go to the land of Canaan, which we will look at. And the ideas I'd like to share with you um, were taught by Rav Chagai Lundin. Has anybody here ever heard of Rav Chagai Lundin? Yes. Okay. Rav Chagai Lundin, I consider him right now one of my Rebbe's, um, even though I have never actually sat physically in a class of his, but I listen to a lot of what he teaches. He is a um, one of the Roshay Yeshivat, Yeshivat um, Sterot, and he uh, teaches at Machon Meir. And he really, I believe this, this Rav has his finger on the pulse of what this generation needs in terms of Torah learning. So I'd like to share with you some of his teachings. I'm going to share the screen now, but um, I can see you guys, which is so cool. Um, okay, so we're doing that. We're doing that. Okay. Do you guys see the share screen? Do you see the PowerPoint? That is so fantastic. Okay. And I can actually see you guys much better. Wonderful. Okay. So on the screen, you see the very first words of the Torah, right? Breshit bara Elohim et ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz. In the beginning, Hashem created the shamayim and the aretz. The aretz haita tov vavo v'choshech al pnei tehom. And the earth being unformed and void with darkness over the surface of the deep. Okay, all of these words are very, very deep and and um, hard for us to even conceive of. I'd say impossible. We can't. We can't conceive of this. But but we do the best we can, right? So it's tovavo. There, it's chaos. It's void, right? We know this. And then the ruach Elohim merachevet al pnei amayim. Vayomer Elohim yehi or vayihi or Hashem said, let there be light and there was light. Vayar Elohim et or kitov and God saw that the light was good. Okay, what is good, right? It is imbued with godliness. Tov, um, kirvat Hashem li tov, as David Melech says in Tehillim. Tov, closeness to God or godliness is the ultimate, ultimate tov, the ultimate good, the ultimate pleasure in the world. Right? Vayavdel, and then he divided. Hashem, Vayavdel Elohim ben or Dodi, yes. Dodi, we're not seeing the text. Ooh, I didn't move it. Okay, hold on one second. Apologies for that, here we go. Sorry about that. Can you see it now? Yes. Sorry about that, all right. Fortunately, I hope many of you are familiar with this, Um, Vaya, right? And so he divided between the or and the choshef. Vayikra Elohim la or yom, la choshef kara laila, vayera, vayvoker, yom echad. Right. So we know this. You can see there was he called the light day, darkness he called night, and there was evening and there was morning of first day. Okay. And we know we're, we're really, I know we're all familiar with Parshat Breshit, the creation that continues in this way, Hashem creating every aspect of our universe in an organized way. And then he creates man and they eat from the tree um, and they get banished from Gan Eden, the story of Cain and Abel, Cain and Hepel. Okay, we don't have time to go into it. Very, very brief on Breshit, but I want to ask the following question. Um, considering your familiarity with Breshit, and that is, what would you say is the central lesson of Parshat Breshit in one or two sentences? You know, it's like an educational, uh, in education, they look for the big idea. What is the big idea here in Parshat Breshit? Would anybody like to venture? If you had to bring it down, to one message, what would that be? Anybody want to venture? Hashem's the creating the entire world. Hashem and created the entire world. Who just said I, that? Wait, tell me who said that? Naomi. Naomi, okay, right. Hashem is the creator of the world. Anybody else? Yeah. And, and Hashem was happy with what he created. Okay, wait, who just said that? Debbie? Debbie. Yeah. Okay, Hashem meaning what? that Hashem liked what he saw when he was finished with the creation. Okay, that inherently this world is good. He liked yes. what he saw. Inherently this world is good. Okay, right. thank you. Beautiful. Okay, so the- Can exactly. I add another one? Yes, Adina, go ahead. Yes. Free will, Bechirah Chofshit. Bechirah Chofshit, excellent, excellent. Okay, and the story of Adam and Chava and free will, right, by Yitzer, our two Yitzers. He created us. Okay. That's also right. Cool. Okay, great. Um, but and we're looking for like an overriding theme, right? If, if we could bring it into one overriding theme, and Rav Chagai Lundin teaches the following, and you know, the mess, as you said, the message of Rishi is that this world is not chaos, it is not Tohu Vavohu. 
as the Rambam says, there is a first existence who brings all existences into being. Hashem is the creator and the sustainer of the universe. As you said, that is what we need to know. And he created the universe with an order and with a purpose, which is tov, with an order and with a purpose. Um, God created each element, like you said, Debbie, and saw that it was good. And the purpose of all creation is for humankind created in God's likeness to reveal this truth this good in every aspect of creation. And that is using our Bechira, Chofshit, like you said. So the under, this understanding that there is a creator who, or, who organized the world and that all of creation is moving in the direction of Tov, which is the ultimate Geula. And it is up to us to make, help bring that ultimate Tov, right? Creation, um, um, Geula, right? So this understanding is the foundation of Judaism, and it's a foundation of everything. It is the fundamental truth that every Jew and really every person, ultimately, in the time of Mashiach, that will be the case. Every Jew and every person must know. And he says, kids sort of know this innately. Kids are born, they believe in God, they ask about God, they know that things are going to be good, right? It's uh, as we grow that we um, sort of lose that that pure that pure connection and have to. Um, and have to rebuild it um, through our Bechira Chofshit. Okay? So there is a creator. The world is organized. The, it, the world is not tohu. Okay? That in a nutshell is Parshat Breshit. And then we move to Parshat Noah, in which we find that humankind is not quite ready to spread that message. Right? So we're looking again, Parshat Noah briefly. We want to cull out of it just one overriding message in uh, in Parshat Noach. Um, in order that we understand the spiritual development of humanity, as well as our own stages in, in spiritual development. Okay, so what applies to the Klal applies to the Prat, what applies to the um, the general applies to the, to the personal, the individual. Um, what do we learn in Parshat Noach, right? So in Parshat Noach, we see many kochot, Many powers that appear in the world, human capabilities, right? Um, building, music, farming. Um, we see that during that time. And humans are very busy doing many things that ultimately, as we know, corrupt the world. The world becomes corrupted, right? Hamas. What is Hamas? So Chazal teach us that humanity engaged, as we know, in things like theft, promiscuity, murder, bestiality, and more. The entire creation was completely corrupted. And so, as we know, Hashem commanded Noah to build the ark, um, and Noah, who was a tzaddik b'dorotav, he was the only tzaddik of that generation. Um, through him, a new humanity would emerge. So there are many ways to understand even the name of Noah. And we know that in, in when Noah is born, he's given a name that he's going to bring, he's going to be Menachem the world, which is a very positive view. But there's also something very fascinating that I love that I learned from uh, Rav Chagarundi. And he suggests, and I think it makes total sense, that the, the name of the Parsha reflects the theme of the Parsha, okay? Noah. Okay, what does it mean when we say, Zelo Noachli? Lo Noachli. What does that mean? Not comfortable for me. Comfort, right. Noach is comfort. It's not comfortable for me. And what he explains here, that what's going on in this Parsha is that human beings in general like to stay in their comfort zones. I'm sure we can relate to this. And by nature, we want things to flow. We want things to be easy. And that is what is going on in Parsha Noach. There are all these kochot right powers but there are no boundaries right there's no restraints there's no year at shamai people did what they wanted stealing promiscuity and murder the place was chaos with no limits it was just like a marble the marble represents a right a flood is just that's that's what it that's what it is like and it's the attitude of i am what i am i'll do what i want whatever will be will be kachaze kachaze Noah, comfort zone. I think if you can put the Koteret there, it would be comfort zone. So Parshat Noah teaches us what happens to creation when people 
want everything to be noach, to be comfortable, to stay in their comfort zone and not move and not grow. And it also teaches us what one is meant to do when we are surrounded by chaos, by corruption, by evil, by a mabud. What are we supposed to do? What does Noach do? Escape. He escapes. He goes, God, God commands him, go into a teva, into an ark, right? What was the teva for Noah and his family? If you think about the teva, the actual teva, the actual ark had three levels. The lowest was for garbage. The second was for the animals and the highest was for the people. There's a seder. There's an order in this ark, right? Noah and his family went into the teva. And what did they do in the ark? If anybody could like sum up what they did, what Mida was particularly uh, going on in the ark? Chesed. Thank you, Chesed. Yes, wait, who just said that? Debbie. Debbie, thank you. Chesed, that's what they were doing. They were taking care of the animals. They were taking care of each other. They were feeding the animals day and night. They went into this ark. They engaged in chesed for 40 days 40 is a number in judaism in in torah that represents completeness the completing of a process right so they go into this teva 40 days they engage in chesed and they worked on themselves they went inward and when they came out there's a rainbow and what is a rainbow a rainbow shows each color separate from the other distinct 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 and that is also another representation of seder of order the world needed to god needed to make seder of the world right there's also a breed a covenant between noah and god and this was now how the world was going to be there's more seder the world is more organized it's calmer and now so now is the time that ethics and morals can be introduced into the world after the flood. Like, for example, what morals and ethics are introduced in the world following Noah? What was the question? What were the um, ethics and morals introduced to the world following Noah? So yes, now you no. have, now you have Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noah. That's it. Sheva mitzvot the Noah had laws. Noah had laws. Sheva mitzvot the Noah. Say there. We're making seder of the world. God was making seder of this world, and now we're at a point where we can come to lefacha. And I will just add that the the lesson of the teva for us is that when we are surrounded by chaos, when we we now today are surrounded by corruption, when we're surrounded by evil, whether we are physically surrounded by this, let's say in a culture of anything goes, and you can take that where you want, um, or this chaos that exists within us. Some some people are, are feeling chaotic inside, right? They're struggling with, uh, with um, all, sorts all sorts of things, all sorts of uh, difficulties, um, like, like lusts and, and bad midot and things like that. Right? What do we need to do? Hashem is telling us we need to go into a teva, an ark. Because a teva, like, like what was said here, separates us in some way from the unbridled physicality around or in us. Right? And a teva for us can be many things. We're not going to build an ark, right? Going into a teva can mean going to learn for a while in a yeshiva, trying to uh, engage in prayer putting aside time for a shiur, meditation, moving to a community where you feel spiritually uplifted. There are, you know, there are many ways that you can enter a teva figuratively, right? Shabbat is also an incredible teva. Some people enter the teva of Shabbat, people who become, um, for lack of better word, bal balei tuva, though I believe we all are. But those who become balei tuva, who didn't grow up observant, right? Their first teva that they go into is Shabbat. Um, Going into a teva, whether for an hour, a day, even a few minutes, or a few months, or even a few years, helps us to make say there of our spiritual selves. It means going inward. I will add one more thing about Noach, and then we're going to move to Lachacha, okay? And also in, in Noach is the Tower of Babel, right? The Dora Hapalaga, the Tower of Babel, right? What was the problem there? That comes after Noach. The problem there 
was they had plenty of order. Think about that building that they were building. Very, very orderly. I'm sure they had plans. They know who did what, right? But this order, right, and it was not in the name of God. In other words, what they were doing by building, by building was the opposite. They were trying to make a name for themselves. It was not for the sake of God. It was not in the name of God. And so ultimately that tower falls. But here we are. The world is in a different place. So Breshit and Noach reflect stages in the spiritual development of humanity and of ourselves. And now we are ready to come to the stage of Lech Lecha in the world. Are there any questions before we begin Lech Lecha? I know this was very brief and we don't have time to go into those two parshiot, obviously I wanna do it, but anybody have any questions, something not clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we move, we move on. Lech Lecha, right? We come to a new stage in, in, in the spirituality of the world, right? This is where the Torah really begins, as Rav Chagai Lundin said. This is where it really begins. <coughs> it's a new, it's a new world. How so? Let's just read the first pasuk of the uh, of the parsha. Vayomer Hashem al Avraham. God said to Avraham, Lech lecha, go for yourself. Okay, we're going to talk all about that. May artacha me um me moladacha me betavicha la arta sher areka. Right, go from your um, land and your birthplace and the your family home to the land that I will show you. Vasecha le goy gadol v'avarcha v'agadla shimcha v'heye bracha. Right, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great. V'avarcha mevarecha mekalecha or v'nibrachu bacha kol mishpachot avav. Right, I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him that curses you and all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. Okay, these are the first words of God to the first person who recognizes that there is a creator who runs the world at every moment through chesed, the first person to understand that his mission and that of humanity was to do God's will and spread the knowledge of God. He, he, he chopped it. Avram was the first one to chop that this is the truth of the world, right? So the question is why dafka these words, the first word, lech lecha. I know this is something that people study and learn a lot, but I think the depth and the, the, the importance of these two words is, is beyond measure in terms of what it means to be a Jew. And so we will be focusing on these two words, lech lecha. Um, so, the very first word of God to Avram is lech. And um, we, being Avram's children, are directed by Hashem to do the same exact thing. So on a pshat level, we know that it means God was commanding um, Avram to leave, physically leave Haran and to make his way to Eretz Asher Areka. He doesn't even know exactly where, but on the way to Canaan, that's the way that the family, Avram's family, Terach, they were moving on their way to Canaan. So it's Eretz Canaan, that's where he's going. Um, but there are other levels to the words Lech Lecha as well, obviously. Okay, and I'll just throw out, you know, I thought of it, we're already in Israel, right? We already live here. So the question is, could it be that the command of Lech, of go, is no longer relevant for us, clearly not. There are so many other meanings to, uh, to Lech Lecha. And throughout the centuries, in exegetic and rabbinic and Kabbalistic and Hasidic literature, um, it is, um, it is clear that the meaning of Lech Lecha can be understood on many different levels. Um, humanity here at the time of Avram is ready for a new phase and God is telling Avraham and through him the Jewish people, what? What is God telling? Anybody want to share? What do you think? Why Lech? What does it mean to you? Why is God telling him Lech? I think that it comes right after Noah to teach us the contrast. Noah is sitting, staying in one spot, static, um, comfort zone. Lech means you got to keep moving. You got to keep elevating yourself. You got to keep moving upward. Bidiuk, bidiuk. Understand this. Take this in, right? That lech means, Hashem is telling him first and foremost, what it means to be a Jew is to walk, to move, to act, 
to progress. Very first word, okay? So that, that is the bottom line, right? Now, Avram comes from um, Haran. He comes from Haran, right? Haran is uh, the meaning of Haran. The word comes from Haron. What is the meaning of Haron? Haron is anger. He comes from a period of angry people led by King Nimrod, Nimrod, whose name means rebellion, right? Merit. And um, Nimrod was a physically strong person, a hunter, right? That's how, and the world before Avram is a world of powers where the modus operandi was that the only way to survive is through fighting and violence, right? And this is why in the Midrash, we, we, we learned that Nimrod threw Avraham into a fiery furnace, right? They were having a, a, a battle of uh, idols versus, versus Hashem. He threw Avraham into a fiery furnace. And of course he survived, Hashem saved him. A fiery furnace, fire, violence, that's where he comes from, Haran. And from that world, Avraham comes in he is Abraham, the name Abraham. Chazal explained that he was Aviha Hamaromem Eta Enoshut, which means the father who elevates all of humanity. And we see here, right? There's a Gemara in Avodah Zarah. And what does it say? A famous Gemara. Tana Debe Eliyahu, Sheshet Alafim Shana Habe Haolam. Wait, am I reading this correctly here? Wait, um, okay, so the word, the world is uh, created and it is meant to last 6,000 years, right? 2,000 years of history will be chaos, right? And this is in terms of what, what humans are doing, uh, what's going on in terms of human spirituality. Um, Torah, Shnei Alafim Yimot HaMashiach. In other words, 2,000 years are 2,000 years of Tohu. And that is leading up to the time of Avraham. 2,000 years will be the 2,000 years of Torah, starting with Avraham, Moshe bringing the Torah. And then the last 2,000 years from the destruction of the temple is understood to be the time of the Geula, where we are moving toward the Geula in the time of Mashiach. Okay, when was Avraham born? Avraham was born in this count in the year 1948, according, I mean, I think that's not a coincidence either, obviously, um, according to the Jewish calendar, 1948, meaning he's born right at the end of these 2000 years, and he lives and moves into the 2000 years of the Torah. Bottom line, Avraham is the link between Olam HaTohu and Olam HaTorah. He is the link between chaos and Torah, which is the ultimate seder, right, which is the goal of all in this world, right? And the world is now open to nivuah, to the highest levels of closeness to God that is possible. So Avram was the first to develop the understanding that this world was not by chance. It is not chaos. There's someone who is running this world and moving this world to the ultimate tov, which is the geula, right? So Lech, your job, Avram, is to move forward, to continually advance and develop. And in terms of our own lives, at some point, each person comes to this understanding. They intuit that this is so, that I need to move. I need to move out of my comfort zone. And I need to uh, do whatever it is in order to grow and develop. And this, Rav Chagai explains, is a sign of true maturity. When you are a walker, when you start to go, right? Our nature wants us to stay in the comfort zone. But if you are a descendant of Abraham, you don't want to stay in your comfort zone. You want to walk. You want to lay. lay. You want to move forward and help the world to do so. Um, okay. And let's just remind ourselves here. Avram, first of all, Avram takes his family to Kinaan from the word Nichna'at, right? Which means submission. And Chazal explained that the land of Canaan at the time that Avram went there was um, submitted to every kind of avodah zara, every kind of idol worship in the world. And think about it. And this is where God is sending Abraham for his own good, right? He's sending to a land that is the worst possible culture that you could enter. And we need to understand this. And this teaches us that to walk as a Jew mm -hmm. is to disengage from where we grew up and go to Eretz Kanaan. And what is Eretz Kanaan? It means moving out of our comfort zone and stepping into the unknown. He didn't know. 
right? He knew it was bad, I'm sure, but he didn't know what he was stepping into. We have to take the chance with Emunah and move into the unknown. So think about this. Hashem does not promise when he says Lech Lecha. He doesn't promise that the journey will be easy. He doesn't say anything about the journey. Um, in fact, it may be at many times quite hard. What God does promise is that if he goes on this journey, if Avram goes on this journey, in the end, all will be tov, will be spiritually good. Spiritual treasures await. Avraham will be so close to God and he is, and his children will be a blessing for all humanity. And therefore, Rav Chagai Lundin explained that someone with an Abrahamic personality, which is what we're trying to develop in ourselves, is a person who is flexible, is a person who is Zorain, right? A person who is doesn't stay in his or her comfort zone, the, moves out of the Noah, right? This isn't a person who says, well, if it's not good for me, then forget it. I'm not going to do it. Like we said, this is who I am. Kaka, I'm not doing it, right? Um, an Abrahamic personality is not scared to move forward, to do things that might be difficult or uncomfortable or scary. So Avram's ultimate motivation for life was revealing the godly ideal in the world. And therefore, Avraham was able to withstand all the trials and move forward. As we know, and you see here, Mishnah Avot, look in, um, on the screen, right? Asara Nisyonot. Right? We know that Abraham was tested with 10 tests. Now, the truth is, I think there were more tests than 10. Um, as you see below here, we have a list of the 10 Nisyonot according to the Rambam. Different great commentators have, have compiled different lists with some differences here. Um, 10 being a number in Judaism that means complete. In other words, Abraham really, through all his tests, went through the complete any kind of test that you could possibly go through in the world, Ki'ilu, that was the, that was what Abraham went through. Look at this. This is not easy. This is so, so hard, right? And Avram taught the world. You can read the list for yourself, but Avram taught the world and us how to be a holech, how to walk, how to deal with challenging situations and grow from every experience, okay? For example, we'll say a few examples. Lech lecha. Right? He's commanded to go, to walk to Eretz Yisrael. He wasn't afraid to make Aliyah. He wasn't afraid to make Aliyah and enter the unknown, right? And leave his comfort zone. Halavai that everybody, we, I think the people who moved here, it's much easier now anyway, but, you know, those of us who moved here have seen, hopefully, that good in the end, we've come to Eretz Yisrael, we've made Aliyah, and we know the good, we're seeing the good, right? We're seeing the, the, the treasures that exist in a life here. And halavai that uh, all the Jews in Galut would, uh, would have that emunah and feel similarly. Um, another example, the famine. He gets to Eretz Yisrael and then there is a famine and he needs to go down to Egypt where he knows that Paro, they're going to take his beautiful wife, Sarah, to the king, to Paro, right? It's a place that he describes, a place without Yerat Shemaim at all. They will just take a king, right? But he showed the world what it means to be a Jew and to go, right? He was a revolutionary. The moment they take Sarah to the king, they just take her. That's what they do in Egypt. You know, I want her, I take her. I want, you know, physicality was the name of the game in Egypt. They just take her. What happened? Hashem hits Egypt with a plague. And the, um, the kingdom, the superpower, almost falls apart because of Avraham. So Avraham showed Egypt a new morality as if to say, done are the days that a king just takes a woman for himself whenever he wants, right? Done are the days when physicality, which was the, the essence of Egypt, runs the world. He begins a process of tikkun, of fixing, of repairing the world, of taking back creation to God. And he is teaching us how to act moral and holy when we are faced with the exact opposite. Now, there are many other examples of this. I'd like to share with you um, one more. Um, and that is... Um, Parting ways with Lot. That's not on here. There's so many. I, I don't think we have enough time to go through uh, many of them. But he had to part ways with Lot when they first got into, um, into Eretz Yisrael, right? Um, and, you know, he knows that he has to do this. And he gives Lot the choice of wherever he wants to go. And we know that Lot, this is his nephew that came with him to Eretz Yisrael. Lot chose to settle. They both had wealth at the time. Lot chose to settle um, in stone which the text tells us was both, was both, it was fertile 
and it was a city that was evil. That's what he chose. And that tells us a lot about Loth. But it also shows that Avraham, in his goal of spreading godliness and reality in the world, knows that he cannot be surrounded by people who bring him down. Okay, even though Lot was his family, Avram knew that they could not stay together if he was to go closer to God and to fulfill his message. His message. Okay, but but I want to just mention this doesn't mean that he wasn't close to Lot. In the next uh, parak, he goes uh, or in the parsha, he goes to war to save Lot. Avram, the paragon of Chesed and love. It's not that he doesn't love people. He doesn't want to give to people and be with people. The message here of separating from Lot is that Avram is not dependent on anyone. He cares about family. He went to fight for Lot. He cares about humanity so much. He was the paragon and love of Chesed. But there is something even bigger and more important than family ties. We see that also with, even with Akedat Yitzchak, which is the ultimate, most difficult test, right? Um, Avraham, when he has to fulfill his role, nothing, nothing, not even family ties can stand in his way. And um, what motivates him always is the will of God and nothing can take him off that path, okay? Again, he is not someone separating himself. We, the Jews, are hardly separated from the world. We're involved in the world. Today, we give chesed. We're doing tremendous things for the world. But still, there is a need to be separated in terms of um, if we are to grow spiritually. So what does this mean individually for us? What must be, this must be the motivator for all of us. But um, to what extent? It's a question we have to ask ourselves. To what extent do we need the security of others? To what extent do we surround ourselves with people in the name of unity, but these people bring us down? Question we need to ask ourselves. Avram is teaching us something very important. And I want to bring out just one more thing. Um, actually, two more things. At each juncture of the test that Avraham went through, right, or at various junctures, after going through these difficult nisyonot, these difficult tests, Avram brings an offering to God, vayikra b'shem Hashem. And he calls out in the name of God. What is he doing? After such a hard test, and there are many, you see this list, and there are many, many more. I'm going to talk about one more in a second. But just so we know what's going on here, right? He's praising and thanking Hashem, not only for saving him, but for the Nisayon itself, which helped him advance his own spiritual growth. And in doing so, he's also spreading word of the greatness of God. His life was not easy. And yet we think of Avram Avinu as a giver and this person who's full of love and joy. And look at his life. Look at his life. And he thanks God every single time. I want to mention one more test, and that is the Brit Ben Abitarim, right? The covenant of the pieces, the promise, the covenant in which God promises Abraham, progeny, and the land of Israel. That is one scary tekes, one scary breed, right? You would think that after all Avram has shown in terms of his devotion to God, that a breed, a covenant with God would be a wonderful festive ceremony, right? Um, and there are many details in this breed, but I'll just share with you some of them, right? I'm going to, the pasuk, the psukim in English. As the sun was about to set, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a great dark dread descended upon him. This is the breed benedictory. And he said to Avram, Know well that your, we know this, that your offspring will be strangers in a land not theirs, and they shall be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. We know that this is the brief benefit they're in. They'll be enslaved for 400 years. Oh, that's that's great news, right? But, God says, I will execute judgment on the nation they shall serve. And in the end, we know, in the end, they shall go free with great wealth. The wealth, of course, not only um, material wealth, but most importantly, spiritual wealth. So guess what's on the way? Besides the fact that he's in the scary, Avram is in the scary setting, and there's a whole, um, there's a lot of parshanut on that. But guess what? Your kids are going to be going to a, a strange land, and they're going to be um, suffering for 400 years before the geula can be reached, right? Okay, so this, there's a lot of things. We know Avram has difficulty having children. Right, and he has to marry Hagar, and then he has to expel Hagar, and then etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We don't have time to go into all of them, but I, I hope this is this is clear. Avram went through Nisayon after Nisayon after Nisayon. He came out, he praised God, he grew, he advanced. You do, it doesn't matter. Hardships, it doesn't matter. 
We have a path. We need to bring the geula, right? We need, um, as uh, Rav Chagai Lundin says, right? Ultimately, when you lech, when you go, when you move, in the end, it will be good. We will get, we will inherit the land, both physically and spiritually, right? We will arrive at our spiritual destiny. In short, he says, yes, there will be galut, but in the end, in the end, there will be geula. And we can think of that both, both on a personal level and on a national level and on a universal level. So when we read Parshat Lech Lecha, we encounter the Avraham within ourselves. And Rav Chagai Lundin explains, it's such a cool thing. He said, it's not a coincidence that we read Lech Lecha when the Chagim are over and Shigra, what is Shigra? Our routine lives begin. Here we are, everything's now routine, right? For, for a few months anyway, right? At this time, we need to wake up to the Avrahamiyut, right? To the Abrahamness within us, okay? Before we move on to the next thing, are there any questions, thoughts, associations? Does, every, does this make sense? Has this been making sense to all of you? You can nod your head. Yes? Okay. That's lech. Lech. Move forward. Advance. Right? And now that we focused on that, the directive of lech, I uh, want to take a little bit of a deeper look into the word lecha. What does that mean? By the way, think about it. The pasuk. It doesn't need that word to work. In other words, it could be a commandment. Go to the land that I show you. Leave your home and go to the land that I show you. But Hashem, of course, says, Lech Lecha, right? For you, right? There are many different understandings of what Lecha means. All of them meaning it's good, right? As Rashi explains, it will be for your ultimate pleasure and goodness, right? And obviously, and the Slonim Rebbe, the Nitivot Shalom explains that that means spiritual, spiritual good and spiritual pleasure. That's what we're aiming for here, um, right? So um, Lecha is always something, something good. It's good for you. So let us learn from the uh, Slonim Rebbe, um, a little bit about Lecha. Slona Marebi, the Nitivot Shalom, one of many of you know, one of my favorite uh, Sfarim, um, Nitivot Shalom. He is contemporary, Rav Shalom Noach Berzovsky. He died in the year 2000. Um, and I find his, the way he writes is very, very easy to read. And the messages are so incredible. Um, so let's just read a little bit of this. Okay, what is the message of Lech Lecha for us individually? Okay, I'm going to read. I'm going to explain here. We're going to start from, can you see my pointer here? Can you see that? Yeah, okay. V'kadosh Baruch Hu ma'amid l'kol echad et kol anesibot v'atanaim sheyuchal al yadam l'taken et asher mitam et asher mitafkido l'taken. Right, so Hashem gives every person the circumstances and the conditions that he or she needs in order to fix what he or she in her unique role in this world needs to fix. In order that a person can fulfill their yud, right? Their, um, their goal, their mission in this world. All of this is saying Hashem gives all of these circumstances, all these nisyonot, right? Whether physically or spiritually, right? Good and bad. It's given us in exact measure. It's given to us in order for us, each one of us individually, to work on ourselves. And um, right? In other words, it's not only that. Oh, Hashem gives it to us, but only through those specific um, conditions, only through those specific nisyonot and life circumstances, can we do our job in this world. Without them, we can't fix, we can't improve what we are meant to fix and improve in this world. Okay, he says, he makes his point over and over. Every single person has their own unique shlichut, and therefore Hashem creates the, the conditions and circumstances that enable us to reach our own personal geula, 
our ultimate gula, and that's what we need to work on, right? But, and he says it here, bottom line, you know, you look around, why is that person's life easier than mine? Or look at how, you know, why is that person's life so much harder than mine? And he says, kacha, you know, that he says, chayav kalim chayim kashim some people have it easier, some people have it harder. It seems, according to our eyes, that every person, um, um, this is really an, an incredible thing, right? Um, and we always have to remember this. We cannot compare our lives and our life circumstances to, to anyone else. We can't do that because it's, it's, it's apples and oranges. It doesn't make sense. And I will, you know, on a personal level, I don't know. I, I imagine m- many of you might know my my current medical condition, which is uh, stage four breast cancer. Um, and it's interesting. It's it's first of all, it's a tremendous nisayon. I will I will say that. Um, it's a nisayon that I meant to have in my life. Shem brought it to me. Um, but also, like in 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 cancer situation, you know, you talk to other people who are who have your illness, or let's say any illness, right? But it's certainly in cancer, you know. You can't compare tumors. In other words, right? Everybody and their unique cancer. Just because a medicine works for this person doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you and vice versa. So every person is on their own path knowing, and for me, it's part of that, is knowing that Hashem has given me this kind of tumor, this kind of specific nisayon. I can't say, oh, because it works for it works for me. And that's in life in general, right? Because it works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. You cannot compare your life to someone else um, because every person has a unique shlichut in this world, right? And he says here on the bottom, even the difficult circumstances of a person's life, realize that even the bad stuff, the hard stuff, Hashem gave it to you in order to use that situation to come closer to God, to fix, to fix yourself, to, to help um, repair and elevate the world. This was said at the beginning, and that's why it's so important when we talked about Breshit. There's no bad that comes to the world. When God created the world, it was good. It was all good. Everything is good, right? Ultimately, it's hard, right? Abraham's whole life was hard, but it's, it was good and it led to good. Right. Okay. Any thoughts or questions about that? Okay. Let's do a little more in the slow number. Now, the slow number, this is, I'm, I'm bringing this because under Lech Lecha is the foundation of who we are as Jews. And we need to understand this. We need to understand what it means um, to be a Jew. And this, this is it. The Zehu. Right? Um, he says that you're, the nisyonot we go through, sometimes we even get to a point where we're so mad at God. We're so mad at God. This is so hard. How are you doing this to me? Right? That's what he's saying here. Right? In the interest of time, I'm just translating it. Um, here's the, all of the nisyonot that we go through are right? He's bringing that, that Rashi. Right for your pleasure and your ultimate good, and this is what it means. Through all these um, experiences and nisanot, it brings us to our tachli, to our ultimate um, goal, mission. Right, who we are meant to be. Right, ultimately, who are we are meant to be? Who we really are. And to the to the extent that we can. Um, Get through these nisyonot, we can get to our, we fix ourselves. We work on ourselves. We fix ourselves, right? I just heard something um, just this morning. Um, someone quoted a little a little video quoting Rebetzin Jungreis, who explained, you know, you have, the desert has lots of sun, right? The desert has lots of sun, right? Sun is like, wow, bright and, and good, right? What does she say that? But what goes on in the desert? There's no growth. There's a lot of sun, everything's good, everything's bright, everything's clear, wow. You know, but there's no growth in the desert. Where is there growth? In the forest. In the forest, there's a tremendous amount of growth where it's dark and it's difficult um, to see. It's difficult to see. It doesn't have all that sun coming in. I thought it was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool mashal there. 
Um, anyway, okay. Um, let's continue here. Okay, I hope everything's clear. And now he goes to Avram Avinu. Right, that's what it, it means. Lech lecha. What does lecha mean? Go where? Um, Hainu el yudecha. Go toward your mission. Go toward your move in the direction of your mission, of your assignment in this world. El tikun ishmatcha. Mashatat zarichim takin belamete. To the tikun, the repair. The, the um, improvement and the elevating of your own neshama, what you need to do in this world. And this is an incredible thing that he says. And this, is, this has always made a very big impression on me, the statement. And he says it more than once in other places. And he quotes Torah Tavot, a previous sefer of the Shlon Rebbe, and he says, Ki gamim yehudi ba'olam hazeh lomed umitpalel ve'osek b'masim tovin. Even if a Jew in this world, he learns and he davens, and he's involved in all sorts of good work, right? He's a from Jew. He's a from Jew. Hare, but im eno do. But if he's not working on his own unique assignment, his shlichut, his mission, mashet sarich l'takein ba'olam, what he needs to fix or she needs to fix in this world. In other words, using yourself as a kli to serve God. We're all different. We have to use ourselves as a kli to serve God. As I then, when you go up to Shamaim after 120, and they ask you, right? Which is, I think, a quote from, from Chazal. What did you make happen in this world? And I guess it's a, it's, a, it's a question. What have you done in this world? Right? We can be judged, accused up in Shamaim when we come to the final judgment, right? Did you? Um, fulfill your own unique mission in this world, right? Right? It's not enough to just do mitzvah. It's not enough to just um, uh, do chesed. It's not enough to follow the Torah. You also, there's a part of you, there's a part of service of God that must be through the uniqueness of who we are. And that's what God is telling to Abraham. He says, which is teaching to all of us, Avram children, lech lecha, right? Go to yourself, perush lahagia, go to, in order to come to the tikkun of your neshama that is specific, your own unique neshama, your own unique shlichut. And in order to do that, you need to leave your comfort zone. Again, lech lecha me'artzacha umi molatacha umi beitavicha. Right, Right, you need to move beyond what's, you know, what's inborn, your nature, your personality traits, your mito. You gotta work. You gotta walk. You gotta work. Um, okay, we have about two minutes left, and I just want. We're gonna skip the rest of this. You can learn it on your own. He says this applies to every part of your life. By the way, do you have a couple more minutes? It's not just till ten. It's till ten ten. So if you go over, that's okay. 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 I mean, if you don't have the full 10 minutes, that's okay. But I'm just saying you don't have oh, to. Oh, I have, but wow, wasn't it wasn't it nine to ten? Isn't that what it said? Ladies, am I crazy? Men, am I crazy? Um, right? Nine to ten. I thought it was and nine then to I, 10, I 10. asked you. Okay. Okay. I'm anyway, take it. Are you, you guys assume another 10 both. minutes? Since right. you usually go both. till, since you like, like, said both. okay, I guess we have a choice. Okay. You know what? Since you often don't have enough time, so assume it's 10, and then this way you'll go a little over and it'll be perfect. It'll be 10 10. <laughs> okay. Go. Anyway, no need to rush. Okay. Well, a little bit need to rush anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. We have to use ourselves as a clea, as a vessel to serve Hashem, our unique, our uniqueness, leaving our comfort zone. Okay. Realize I'm not, this might be like, you know, you might know this, or you might sort of know this, but you haven't thought about this. Or maybe you do think about this because you are all, you know, wonderful people who probably learn all the time. But this is the first message to Avram Avinu. This is, this is it. This is the foundation, right? We always have to remember this. We always have to remember this. Um, and we have to keep walking. And here we're going to read then the Slonomer as he continues. He says something very wonderful and true. He says, in Ruchniut, 
You know, in Gashmi, so you can stand in one place and not move physically. You can stand in one place and not move, but that's not the case for Ruchni or for spirituality. If you are not going up, you are coming down. Okay, there's never, I'm just going to stay right here. If you're not going up, then know that you are going down in terms of spirituality. And here he goes. Um, Right, this is true. The need to walk, to move out of comfort zone, to to grow, is true for every part of our 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 lives. And he brings some wonderful psukim that I'm not going to go into here. Um, every day, every day we have to move forward. We have to move forward, right? In terms of mitzvot, say mitzvot lo say the mitzvot of the of the heart, he says here, right? Um, right? If you are not engaged in walking, in trying to grow, right? Then you are moving backwards. That's why God tells us to walk, right? That we have to lech lecha in, in a continuous way. We always have to keep on walking to fix ourselves. Okay, I think the message here is um, the message here is uh, is clear. And uh, let's see. Okay, so I just want to summarize here. Um, or actually, I'm not going to summarize that, but I do want to just a wonderful thing. I know I've shared with with the class before that reflects this in a very sort of funny but true way. Um, I think I heard it from a Rabbi Schaefer, who was a rabbi in New York, where he said, this world is the gym and the next world is the spa. OK, what do we do in the gym? We work. We work, we work out, we work. That's this world. See, I think I have that machine there just for this purpose to make that this world is uh, the gym. The next world is a spa. You're done. You sit and you uh, in the ziva shechina, right? But you're done working on yourself and zeozit. And then whatever you did, you did. And whatever you didn't do, you didn't do. So we want to do. We want to walk. Um, okay. Any questions before we move on to one more source? Thoughts? No. Yes. Jamie, you want to say something? Yes. Um, I think one of the things that like I sort of learned from that in the past few years is that what Hashem wants from us is that we have, we sort of know innate, we sort of know sometimes what our natural gifts are. Um, and we also know the things that we have to work on and we're supposed to do both. Um, but like a way to, and I think this is from the Son of Rebbe, that the, you know what your gifts are. It's not okay, like, let's say just to give tzedakah. If you have a gift of being able to really give like that, um, you should give in different ways. If you're, you know how to connect with people, um, it's not just okay to like, you know, necessarily, obviously you have to help your family first, but use the gifts that you have that you're stronger in to go to the next level and also work on your traits that aren't as strong but that's like a practical way to understand like um not standing so yes thank you Dan. beautiful and so true and the slumber says this in many places 100 percent. i mean it's you know it's we have to we cannot you said it beautiful we cannot stand still we can't and that when you realize that that's a sign of uh of maturity in general and spiritual maturity. Let's take a few minutes. I just want to add one more point here and then we're going to go. The Sfat Emet. The Sfat Emet um, brings a, uh, a beautiful idea. And actually the one that, that expands on this is Rav Ayal Vered, another one of my favorite modern rabbis today. He also teaches at Machon Meir. And, um, and he wrote a book um, that... Um, is a perush on some of the Svat Emet teaching. So I'm just going to read a few lines in English um, in the interest of time. Go to yourself from your land. Okay? And I just want to read the Hebrew words up here. Ki adam nikra mahalach. Mahalech, I'm sorry. Adam nikra mahalech. A person is called a, a walker. Okay? A goer. And one needs to always be going from one level to another level. And even when one merits getting to a certain level in one's dedication to the blessed creator, even this, and this is the reason, 
even this becomes to the person a second nature. In other words, when you achieve something, it becomes part of your nature, right? It becomes a, a habit in effect, right? So you're there, you reach that point. Now you got to move, move higher. And therefore we always need to renew the ways of one soul in the service of the holy name. And Abraham, our father, Allah Shalom, was tested with 10 tests. And in every test, he was made into a new being, a new creation until he merited to be above nature as it is written and, and the proof text here. Okay, so Rav Ayal Vered brings out this point, which I think is beautiful. Note that Avram Avinu was commanded lech, to walk. He was not commanded rat, to run, okay? And you can say that Avram turns this world from a world that runs to a world that walks. And what does this mean? What is running? Running is highly focused, it's targeted. You pant heavily, <laughs> right? You're panting heavily um, until you get to the finish line. And the goal is to achieve, to accomplish. You know, think of a marathon, or for me, I immediately go to the association of the rat race, sort of working very, very hard. I feel like I had several years um, before I got sick where I, I was breathing. It was like hyperventilating from all the things that I was busy doing. Um, and my illness put an immediate stop to that. And now, I breathe much more slowly because I realize that's the way life should be. But I think the rat race and people, you know, it's like, da, 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 right. But we're commanded to walk. Um, and walking is different. Walking is tahalichit. What is a tahalich? A tahalich, and it's the same root, obviously, is a process. It's slower. It's deliberate. It requires attentiveness, right? And, um, you know, I just spoke actually to someone yesterday. Um, who is grew up conservative, reform conservative, but she's dating someone who is Orthodox and she wants to um, know how to build a traditional home. But she said, I don't want to just like do things. I don't want to just jump into it. I don't want to just take it on right before she learns about it, before um, she understands it. And, you know, here I had prepared this year and that's exactly the point. It is a tahalich, we walk. When we come closer to God, we are walkers. We go through a process in order to get there. And that's what, what Bizzot Hashem, she will do. Um, walking, he also says wonderfully, is an act of emunah. Because you have, when you walk, think about it. You have to release your yourself from the aretz, right? From the uh, earth and from your hold on physical ground and from the security of your weight on the ground. And you have to put your faith and trust in the next step. Right. So you're breaking the habit, the hair gale, you know, from regal, right, of standing in place on solid ground. Even it's beautiful when you think about how God created us as walkers, right? Even physically, we have to have emunah in order to move forward. Um, we have to have emunah in order to leave our comfort zone of lifting ourselves off the ground and moving forward. So the spot emet here, like the Nativo Chalom, is making a radical call for heat chad shoot for renewal for constant inner renewal to constantly search for new ways of making seder of organizing our lives of doing of growing to dive into unfamiliar waters and to dare not to be afraid to dare just like avram avinu right avram avinu moved forward through walking and not running right his advancement and when by doing that it became when he advanced it became part of who he was. And the secret of walking is to slowly and steadily advance to grow and renew something every single day because it adds up and we want to become, right? We will, by doing so, by walking in this way, we will reach what we've been seeking, will become a person of continuous growth and renewal. To be an Adam Mahalek, we want to become the person who is constantly walking, who is constantly growing, um, but not to run not to run. And this was Avraham's method. And this is the method that Hashem wants us to use as we constantly amplify our own spiritual growth and our service of God. So with that, I will sum up and say that today's, um, what we learned from today's class, I would sum up as follows. Don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone, to break your habits, to try new things in order to grow spiritually. Focus on the goal of living a life of Kedushah, of exemplifying God's will in the world and elevating creation and make sure you do it in your unique way with your unique personality, 
talents and gifts through your unique missionos and your unique path. And don't let outside forces deter you. Do all of this as a walker, slow but steady, deliberate with emunah shlema and calm breathing. Jews breathe calmly. We don't, uh, we don't have to ventilate. Um, in order that your spiritual progress becomes internalized, in order that we become a constantly spiritually renewing person. This is the new dera that Avraham brought into the world. And this is the ultimate mission of the Jewish people. And with that, I end and open up the floor for any questions or Before comments. you take questions though, before you yes. take questions, I just wanted to, um, and that, first of all, thank you. And second of all, thank everybody for your patience. I know we had a little issue in the beginning. Um, so uh, anyone who missed the beginning, it has been recorded. And as soon as the meeting is over, I will begin to upload it as soon as possible. So you can listen to the beginning that you might have missed. And again, I apologize. And I thank you for your patience. This is all still a learning curve. Um, the, um, the link for next week will be the same one that we got on today. Um, the link for the continuation of the course will be sent to those who register. So uh, if you have any questions, you can Continue with Dodi. I'm actually going to leave the meeting. Dodi, please do leave all when you're done. Leave right. all. When, okay. when, you, when you do end, do end for all. This way, I'm going to make you host now. You I can, can take press, questions. Okay, okay, end for all. Got it. So you can take questions. Okay. okay. Thank you, Melissa.